Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at arrays, and in particular, arrays used for a couple things like gradients, which has always been a little bit confusing, and the Zim Blob and Squiggle Points, which are also pretty tricky looking. So let's go into a file now. Let's see. And we've got a Zim template here, basically. That came from the Zim site at zimjs.com. If you want to see that, here's zimjs.com. We go to the code section and copy the template. That's basically it. We're bringing in CreateJS and Zim, ZimCat01 in this case, and coming down into a frame where I've removed some of the things from the template. Uh, and we can start coding. Oh, joy. First of all, a little bit about arrays. Hopefully you know what an array is as you're coding. Um, that would look something like uh, const r is equal to a new array. We don't usually do it that way, but it is an object that is made from the class as well. So you can do it that way, but usually we use the array literal, which looks like that. So this thing, uh, const y is equal to yes. That's a string literal, but you can also make a new string like new string and put the yes in there, which well, why would we bother doing that? So that's a string literal. There's also a number literal, a Boolean literal, an object literal that we use, one of these squiggly brackets, function literals. So literals are sort of short form ways instead of making a new function, new object, new number, which we could do as well. So there's our array literal. We put uh, objects in there. So this array can hold any objects, unlike some languages like Java, Java, for instance, where you have to hold the same type of object in it. We now have a vector or something like that in JavaScript. We don't use that much for maximum performance, but you're probably not going to notice. So we can hold anything we want in an array. Uh, hello, there's a string object. Here is uh, a number object. Here is an object literal with a property in it, prop colon value. Uh, put strings around the value, <laughs> almost. <laughs> prop colon value, we can put a function in here, a function literal, for instance. There's the function. Oopsie, where do we go? Where do we go? We can put a function literal in there. We can have a reference to another variable, variable, and then somewhere else we have uh, var or const, I guess, variables. <laughs> I'm not quite used to calling variables constants yet, but eh, so be it. They seem to say that even in JavaScript errors. Uh, const vari or variable const was not last. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, is it a constant or a variable? Constant means it doesn't change, variable means it changed. So it's sort of like an oxymoron, but uh, JavaScript doesn't seem to mind. We still call this a variable stored in a const, whatever, <laughs> const array. Uh, you would store something there, seven. So anyway, you can reference other things there. So anything basically can go in there. Usually it's, uh, we, we look at this stuff and I don't know what this is. So usually we try and keep the same type of data in an array. That's best pr practice to do that. And then you can say, this is an array of colors. This is an array of sizes. And each thing in there is a size. And that's what arrays are good for, not really storing different things like this. If you want to store different things, you should be using the squiggly brackets. The squiggly brackets is the object literal, greet colon hello. Uh, the time, colon, that, um, whatever, <laughs> you know, the animation, colon, this. So then you have all that data, but you've also told us what that data is with a little label there. So we have some metadata as well. So if you have a bunch of different things, often it's best to store that as an object, uh, as an object literal, not an array. Anyway, that's enough of that basic stuff. Uh, we use uh, arrays quite often to store a list of things. When uh, It's really helpful when we don't really know how many things there might be. For instance, in the points of a blob or squiggle, there could be any number of them. So let's put them in an array. Each point gets uh, an array element. Uh, with, with gradients, we're going to make a gradient. That's another thing. Uh, with a gradient, you don't always have just two colors going from this color to that color. 
you can also go from this color to this color to this color to this color to that color. And that means we don't know how many colors we're going to have, and that's why we use an array in the gradient code. Let's try making a gradient color. First of all, here's how to make uh, you know a, a, some color in a circle. So new circle. Well, do you want to start with a linear one? Let's start with a linear one. New rectangle. There's two types of gradients, a linear gradient, straight line, and a radial gradient which is a round radius, or goes out radially from a center point, or from a point, actually, not always center. So there's a new rectangle. We will make it 100 by 100, comma, and well, let's make it 100 by 200, so we have it just a little bit different, comma, uh, blue, dot center. There we go. So that's obviously not a gradient, but let's view it in a browser. There it is, it's long going down. So we want to now apply a gradient to that. And we can go a gradient across or a gradient down. And we would put it right in there for the color, a new gradient, or you could assign that to a variable and then put the, the variable in there. So we wanna make a new gradient. The first parameter of the gradient is an array of the colors that we wanna use for the gradient. So let's keep the blue and go to a red. So this is going to be a gradient that goes from blue to red. The next parameter is another array that says where in terms of uh, a proportion between zero and one, where does this color start? So uh, traditionally, if you want to go right from the edge, being blue and to the other edge being red, that would be the blue will start at zero and the red will uh, end at one, or it will be full red at one, it will be full red, uh, full blue, sorry, at zero. So that's what these numbers mean. And we'll play around with those after. Let's uh, Next is where does this blue, uh, uh, where does the line start in a sense? So where, where in X and Y position do, do we start the line? Where, uh, and what it is is we're going to specify a line with a, a start X and a start Y and an end X and an end Y. And basically it draws the gradient along that line from the start to the end. So whatever colors here, uh, it'll put, or whatever percentage we use here, or, or ratio we use, it'll start on that line. Oh, let's make one and then we'll play around with it. So if we want to start at the top left corner, then that would be zero comma zero comma. So that's the start X and start Y of our line. And then where do we go to? Well, we could go to zero in the X, so we won't go across in the X, but we will go to 200 in the Y. So that's down at the bottom. Uh, yeah, let's see, because this is 100 high, all right? And watch what happens. We refresh here, whoop, and we've got a broken thing. So let's look, F12. Uncaught gradient is not defined. Uh, let's see, new gradient color. There we go. Um, so let's try that again, and we refresh here. And there we have it. So there's a gradient color going, I think I want to drink that. Wouldn't you want to drink that? Going from blue at the top, coming across halfway, and red at the bottom. You know what, let's keep the, uh, I'll open this up in Browser Plus so we can see both at the same time. Browser Plus, you can kind of see the gradient and the code. We could even make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. How about, um, 300 by 700, and let's have a look. Oh, um, so, okay, we made the rectangle 300 by 700 long, but we only made the line, it's a long, long bit of code there, isn't it? Uh, we only made the line go from 0, 0, which is here, to 0, 200, which is there. So now that's where full red is. Uh, we want probably uh, was it 700? If we, if we want to go the whole thing, but you, you don't have to. That's like a little blue on the top of a lot of red. And refresh, and now we get that full mix. If we wanted it to go diagonally across, then we would go to the width here, which was 300. So there's 
300 now means that we're going from 0, 0 in the left corner to 300, 700, and we, re oh, we save it, and we refresh here. So now I don't know if you can tell, but it's uh, going across. If we make it wider, we could probably tell better. How about 700 by 700? Well, I'd like to keep it a little bit different just so we um, you know what these numbers are. So this is 500 now. There we go. And there's a diagonal gradient. Now, it's a pretty even gradient as it goes. How could we tell that it's more of a, a diagonal? Let's um, Let's play with these numbers now. What if we said, okay, go from 0.5, well, 0.4 we'll call it, to 0.6 here. So what this means is along that line, be blue, 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 until you get to 0.4 of the way in a ratio of 0 to 1. So that's 40% uh, of the way. And then start the gradient and go until you get to 60% of, of along that line. And here's what we get. So we save that up. And now the gradient is tighter in there. And we can see that to some degree a diagonal is going. I still think there's something peculiar about that. Zero, zero. We're drawing. I guess that works. So we're drawing the line. You can see that that's like perpen perpendicular to the line from, from there to there. So be it. So do you see what that's doing? That's not starting at the very tip of the line, but if, if we change it, if we want more blue, or well, blue to come back and more of a gradient in here, I'm gonna change that to 0.2. And now we've got 0.2 of full blue, but 0.6 of full red, and then a gradient in between. Uh, okay, so anyway, that's what these numbers mean. And you can try it out with another one, and say we go to purple like that, and then you would put that at 0.5, comma, and this would the line would stay the same, and we refresh here. And now we've got 0.2 of blue before it starts a radiant, uh, radial gradient to 0.5 for purple, but then it goes from 0.5 to 0.6. This little bit right here is a gradient between purple, the full, full out purple, and the full out red. So if we bring that back up to one, and maybe this to zero, we would see that blue going into purple, going into red. Okay, so that's where we've used an array because we don't know how many numbers we're, or how many uh, colors we're going to be putting in here. So uh, that's really handy. Otherwise, it would have been easier if we just said, okay, hey, the start color is blue and we're going to red and we're going to go from, you know, we might not even need that, but if, if you want to see a zero to one, then we don't, we're not using an array really here. But the problem is now we're locked in. We can only do two colors. By putting these into an array and this into an array, we're able to handle multiple number of colors as a parameter. It just makes it look a little bit more complicated. That's all. All right, so hopefully that's pretty clear for you now. Let's try it again with a circle. So with a circle, comment that out. With a circle, it is new circle. Zoom explore. Let's explore a circle. Oh, wow. I've been, I, I've always been confused about gradients until I really finally learned what those numbers meant. <laughs> uh, and circles, you'll see, I bet you I even get confused still. It can still be a little bit confusing. We'll give this one a radius of 200, maybe 300, comma, and then a color. So here's where we can put the new radial color. So one's a gradient color, the other one's a radial color. And it's kind of similar, so we're going to go from, how about green, to uh, purple. Well, let's try pink. All right, so Again, we can put any number of colors in here, but let's just try one, uh, a simple one, comma, and then the per the uh, ratio again, so from zero to one. And now this is a little bit different here in that it's the starting point. So where where uh, do we want to start this in in the shape? I think it is. Uh, so that's zero zero in a circle. Uh, that has its origin in the center. So we're going to start it in the center, 0, 0. The next number is the radius that we want to start at. Now let's think about this. If we want green to be on the inside, the radius we would start here 
is zero. I often think of this as being the outside color and that being the inside color, and I put zero here and I put the other one there, and I end up having my radiant, or my gradient, <laughs> gradient, radiant, hey, that's good, radial gradient, the wrong way, and I have to go in and fix it. So I, I've now learned that, you know, I, if I want green in the middle, which I don't, I want green on the outside. So therefore, we should put the full radius 300 there. So 300 is where the green will start, comma. And then if we want this to be balanced, like around the center, we can go uh, 0, comma, 0. That's the x and y that we're going to be going to. Again, we're drawing a line. But this time, it's a line from a certain radius to another uh, radius point, as, as you'll see. So here we go, 0, 0, and 0. That is the inside. So this is a radial gradient. It will be a 100% green at 300 radius on the outside. And it will be 100% pink uh, at 0, 0, 0, uh, which is the center. And we refresh here. Oh, then I need to center it on the stage. And let's have a green. There it is. So green on the outside and pink on the inside. Again, you can tighten it up so that we can we can see that better by going something like 0.4 and 0.6. That that leaves just a 0.2 difference between them. So it's going to go up to 0.4 will be green, then um, 0.2 of the way. So 20% of the way in the in the middle area here will be the gradient, and then it will go to full out pink at 60%. And there's what we have. We've got green, a little bit of blend, 0.2 of a blend, and then pink. Now watch what happens when we change the center point of this. Let's go up. So if we change the center point, instead of 0, 0, if we go up, that means negative. Here, if we go negative the radius, let's go half the radius. What's the radius of this again? 300. So 150. We're going to go negative 150. What that means is we're going to move this point up for the pink. And we save that up and we refresh here and you get the pink being at, at 150. So, hey, doesn't that look like an olive? Let's change that to red. Um, it might look even more like an olive if we just bring it a little bit over. So let's bring it over, like minus 100. So now we got minus 100. We move the, where, the, where the center of that is over a little bit. And that's how you can make planets and stuff like this. Watch what happens if we bring it right to the edge. So one minus 150 and um, zero. <coughs> Excuse me. So minus 150 is going from here to there. It didn't quite do what I wanted to. How about minus 350? Minus 350. Let's see. Ooh, it's moving it right off the edge. Minus 550. And Lo and behold, you start to get, uh, let's see, what do we need? We need to loosen this guy up a little bit. Two and eight. And what do we get now? We start to get the planet. So we've just moved this off the edge. We've made the gradient work a little bit better. And you can choose various colors like black. Do we want white or black? Where, oh, well, okay, we'll make this part uh, the black and this part white or light or yellow or something like that and hey it's a little bit of a ball you want to move the shadow up that would be minus 100 there and yeah well, maybe maybe minus 400 okay and you've got shadow on a ball cool huh and again you can throw in another color here uh, blue I don't know what's going to happen at <laughs> 0.5, uh, comma, and let's see what happens. Well, it must be white, but there's a lot of blue. Uh, we would have to bring that to a 0.4. Um, so. Hmm. All right, so you continue to play 0.4 to 0.5. Let's see, what did that do? It's from here to here, and it's tighter. Whereas if we if we loosen it up, it loosens. And here's where, you know, it's like, okay, I didn't quite expect that. So it's a bit of a mind twist when you've got these things going. But you should be able to play around with it and get it to a point um, that you like. Also, remember that Zim has blue, 
like this, dot darken. And we can darken it by 0.5. So this is new to Zim. Uh, Zim 10, I think we introduced it. And that's a, a darker blue like that. We'll, we'll open that radius up a little bit so that it looks better. Uh, put that at zero and refresh here. And there we go. And so you've got the darker blue on the outside going to a white and a blue. I don't even know if we need that one. I don't think we do. Probably look about the same. Oh, it is. It does help. Um, okay. So that's enough about uh, gradients. I hope that that's clear for you now. If not, watch the video again. Explore again. Woohoo! We did have another thing that we were wanting to use arrays for, and that is uh, adjusting blobs and squiggles. So let me show you an example of, of that in action. Hmm, where was that? Uh, I was doing some work in the co-op. I suppose I could show that one. Co-op. Uh, faces, it's called. Index. And open in a browser. This hasn't really been arranged or anything like that, and we can't see it. But um, that is us changing the points of a blob and squiggle, and uh, like so. Rah, rah, rah. We can, ooh, I'm evil, evil. Ooh. Oh yeah, this one will work. So these are the points of a blob and squiggle. And normally you can just pick up a blob and squiggle and make adjustments. But we were wanting to make it so that um, instead of picking this up and changing it, we could control the points of it so that it's not quite as free. You know what I mean? We're, we're limiting that and we, we can do, uh, more things to it than that as well. We can also animate blobs and squiggles. Let me show you an example on CodePen. Is that CodePen Danzen? I think it was. So CodePen Danzen. All pens, and there it is right there. So the this is us animating the points for a blob and squiggle. Now let's see what that looks like when we turn on the animation. So what we've done is we set a style that is called interactive false. And this style will go on every single blob we made. So we made a bunch of blobs for the ears, for the cheeks. All of these things are blobs. And let's see what those points look like. So I'm going to comment out the style. And by default, blobs and squiggles <laughs> have their points showing. So there's what's happening. You can see that. All of these, uh, let's click off and try just one at a time here. So what we're doing is we're wiggling this rectangle point right here. We're also moving, uh, I think we're moving this main point around. Sometimes we scale the points. What are we doing with these things? Yeah, look, we're scaling the points bigger and smaller. So oh, there we are rotating the points. So based on the rotation, we're making those lips move. Very cool, huh? Oopsies, <laughs> there, there's uh, what happens if you click on something. <laughs> Fun. So uh, these things will still animate even if you move them around. Hello there, talking mouth. <laughs> Why, hello, oops, <laughs> missed the drop. Hey, why can't I drop it in the right place? It must be animating it to a certain position or something like that. There, I'll bring that one down anyway. The wiggle, yeah, okay, look, the, the wiggle height, we're probably wiggling it based on a certain height there. So if I bring it up, it, it wiggles it back down to that height, where this one's not doing the height, it's just moving things about. <laughs> All right, so it can be fun playing with these blobs and squiggles. What this looks like in the end, to see all that, is let's just go in. Here's a blob, this is the wig, and oh, point data. So what we've done is made this look a bit better by there's the data for the face. So that's the face blob, but the points are coming from face data. The points here are coming from left ear data. So we recorded all that data and they're available out in here. Doot, doot, doot. Right there, that's the face data. So let's see, oh, I can hit the eyeball here. Here is that data. There's the data for the wig and this is the first point of the data right there. And what we have is an array 
this whole, oh, yep, this whole thing right there is an array inside of another array. So this is the first element of the, the uh, wig data. This is the second element, and each element matches a point of the wig. So the wig only has this many points right there. One, two, three, four points for the wig. And if we go back and take a look here, one, this one, two, three, four points to the wig. <laughs> Hello, wig. And we're uh, animating those points. So if we come on in here, there's the wig. Well, you know what? Why don't we just drop back and try it ourselves? But you can come here and see how we do animate these. And it's, uh, uh, I think we're wiggling them. So down here, there's a lot of parts for brows and top teeth and bottom teeth and all this. Then we're wiggling the whole head. And now we're wiggling the various points. So we got the point objects of the wig. <laughs> we're wigg and we're wiggling the point objects of the wig. But what I'm going to do is tell you what these points mean and how we access them. So let's go back into some code here where we were making the gradients. And we will add, that's not where we were making the gradients. That was our uh, animating the eyeballs of that face earlier. So here's our gradient. And we make a uh, const blob is equal to a new blob. Hopefully you're okay. We're not going too over time on this. Uh, sometimes our, our, our uh, explorers go for about an hour. Oh boy. And if you're still here and liking this, why don't you come into zimjs.com slash slack and hang out with us if you're not already. As a matter of fact, this was a request from a couple people on Slack to find out what these things mean. So we're trying to help out here. A new blob, and then we can dot center that. And let's scale it as well so it's a bit bigger. Scott 2, and we'll refresh here. We commented out our circle, and that gives us this blob right here. Now, if you think about it, uh, we have to keep certain data for these points. One is where the point is, an x and y within the blob, so an x and y. But also, what type of point it is. If I double click these, it turns into different types of points. This one actually can make a pointy point, like that. I double click again, and now it's it doesn't even have any handles. And that's called none. The other one was called free. This one is called mirror. It's, this is the type of point, mirrors, because look at mirrors. But the next one's almost like mirror, but it, it keeps it straight, and we call this one straight. So those are the types of points. We also have to tell it where the rectangle is with respect to the circle, and where this rectangle is with respect to the circle. And anytime you're saying where, that's an x and y. So you'll need an x and y for the rectangle, x and y for the uh, for the other rectangle, the circle itself within the controls, I'm now moving the whole controls, but the circle itself can also move and not move the rectangles. So that can also create some effects if you just move the circle within. Usually we don't move the circle. The circle just stays at 0, 0 within the controls. And then these ones are X and Ys related to the 0, 0, which is usually right here. Okay, so there's two, uh, there's several ways that we access these points because there's many of them and they're sort of important. One is we can pass points in to the blob. And uh, that looks like this. Uh, we'll, we'll go directly to the points parameter, points. And we could say, hey, uh, square, I think, square. I think that will make a square blob. Nope. Rectangle. Is it rectangle? There we go. Rectangle. My apologies. Um, so that makes a blob that starts off like a rectangle. You can also say circle, which is even better than the circle. These, these sort of named types of points were added afterwards. But that makes more of a circle than the default blob. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. Let's actually change color. That color colon purple. And there's a purple one. So this 
that shape, you see, it's kind of like, I don't know, a little diamond-like. It's it's maybe an oblate spheroid. Who knows? But anyway, that that's not quite. We just set these at 100. It's something like over 100, over 100, up 100, down 100. And that's how the blob was for a long time. Then we realized, oh, well, actually, that's that's not a circle. So we did provide a way that we could specify points as a circle. And then it's a better ratio. It's something like, ooh, I don't know, 107.8 or something is the best approximation of a circle that we can do. Um, but you can also put SVG in there. So you can put an SVG path command in there, and it will calculate uh, the blob points for an SVG path. But we can also put our own points in there. Now, the way to do that would be to normally just record where the points are at. Let me show you quickly. Stage dot on stage mouse down. Or we could use a key. Let's use a key. That's better. Uh, frame dot on. I was going to say anytime you press on the stage, it records, but that would be annoying because we're trying to move them and then it would record. Uh, on quote key down, call this arrow function. And we'll collect the event object E there. And we can, oh, we don't need it actually. We'll just do any key. It doesn't matter. Like, But if you did want to use an R key or something, we'd use E dot key code. If E dot key code is equal to whatever R's key code is, then we could record the points. But in general, we'll just record the points. And that would be blob dot record points and we put true uh, if you say record points it puts it in the console if you say true then it's going to actually pop up a window for us so we go like this we move so let's make a, a weird purple happy face <laughs> all right and then i hit any key and this is what it does it gives us the points for that happy key so we copy those points and we can put them right in here. Paste. So now our array of points have been put into the points. And when we save this and refresh here, whoop, there it is. That's It made our happy face for us. Neat, huh? We've helped it. I mean, it doesn't take too much to, to do that. And you're welcome to do that at any time. But we also have pizzazz four, I think, pizzazz four. Uh, the pizzazz one is backgrounds or shapes, I think it was. Pizzazz two is icons. Pizzazz three was patterns like cross hatching and polka dots. And pizzazz four is different types of blob and squiggle shapes. So let's have a look and see where that is. That's in Zim in a variety of different ways. One easy way is at the top of the docs, we have the code for various libraries, and, and there's pizzazz four. So here's Pizzazz 4. Pizzazz 4 was also part of Zim Neo. We launched it in Zim Neo. So if you go back to the Zim and under examples, and you happen to see Zim Neo, which is right here, you can go into Zim Neo, where we were doing all of this pattern work. This is Zim 9, and hit Pizzazz 4. And that brings us to Pizzazz 4. The other place you can find it, if you happen to be in the code section, is down below in the code section, scroll, 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 is our library. So there's Socket and Physics and uh, 3JS, and here's the Pizzazz libraries. And this last one is for paths. And once you get here, you can change these things. By the way, you can add points. So there we've just added a point. You can also remove points by clicking and holding or by shift clicking, shift clicking. And there we've removed some points. And there we made some sort of egg. You hit code, and it gives you that. You can also shift the code a little bit. Uh, by the way, if I picked this up and moved it, the code would not be affected by that. So it's a bit strange, as in when we put in the points, you'd still get a blob, and it would just like show up like that. So this is the x and y of the blob itself that we're doing. And that's not really recorded in the points of the blob. So sometimes you design this blob and you think you've got it all, all looking great like this and you bring it in and it's sitting over here. And you're going, oh, well, I actually wanted it to be sitting here. 
you could go into the code and go left, 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 left. <laughs> and what that's doing is actually changing the numbers or right, 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 or whatever it is. And then hit update and, it, and the blob will change. There's the squiggle points as well. You can do the same thing. And there's a menu here of various um, blobs. You're welcome to add your own if you want, like the back, the back blob, right, like that. Um, there's also a, a menu of squiggle stuff as well. Great. So let's go in and see what those those points mean. It doesn't really matter to tell you the truth what these points mean as much, uh, although it's probably something like the x and y position of the point. Then oh, I'm not sure. Um, let's see. This is all one point. Oh, that's the x and y position of the circle which is, like I said, is zero, zero most of the time. This is the x and y position of one of the rectangles and the x and y position of another of the rectangles. But usually we don't have to come in here and adjust these points because we would just do them manually and then record them. But one thing nice is you could come in here and match certain things. If, if when you do it manually, these things aren't the same, you can say, well, actually, <laughs> let's just make those both 50 like that. And if you know what you're doing, then you'll, you know, you know what the outcome will be. When we want to actually animate a blob or change points of a blob, it's different. These are just the points that we pass in to make a blob. Afterwards, we don't really use those again. So that's why I'm not really paying too much attention to, to what's up there. What we want to do is say animate. What have we got here? We've got a, a smiley face. Let's animate this one up and down. Hello. Okay, so we'll wiggle that one going up and down, or we could animate it. Animate knows what it's doing. It will go here, then it will go back. It'll go here, go back, go here, go back. But it's not random. It's it's looping uh, or re looping and rewinding. So if you want animation, uh, or sorry, uh, random animation, that's Zim Wiggle. So Wiggle will wiggle it in various ways, uh, kind of similar to animate. You can pause animate, and that will actually pause wiggles as well. It uses animation in behind, but it, it animates within certain ranges and keeps on changing those ranges as, as we go. So let's uh, wiggle this or animate it up and down. doesn't really matter. Or we could use a slider and uh, do that. But how do we access this point? Um, that would be we uh, the point is available on the blob so we could go something like const points is equal to and these are different types of points why don't we call it controls just um, just to sort of differentiate between these points up here const controls is equal to blob dot uh, point controls Torture. Point controls. That is a property that gives us an array of each of these controls as a container. So that's that's a container, which means that we could animate that whole control up and down if we wanted to using this. And at zero then would get us the first one. That gets us this one. Let's refresh that. Uh, I think the blob, when we make a blob, this is the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. So uh, it's going to be operating on this one. And then we can wiggle it, dot wiggle. Here's where we would put in um, the starting, or what, let's rotate it. Rotating is a bit easier. We'll do rotate, rotation. So this is the property that we want to wiggle. Here's the starting rotation, which is zero, comma. And then we're gonna rotate, say, uh, 20 to 50. So that's the minimum will rotate and that's both ways. So that's around zero. So 20 degrees around zero, not to positive 20 only, zero to 20. It's uh, an amount 20 degrees. We're rotating this about zero to 50 degrees about zero. And uh, that's it. See, that's another thing animate can't do very well. You can't start in the middle and animate up and then go past the middle and animate down very easily. And so that was always really annoying 
And so wiggle, you can't wiggle. That's actually what it does. And with wiggle, you can't do it the other way around. You, you'd have to, anyway, whatever. Um, and then the next thing is the minimum time that we're going to take. So how about half a second to a second? So this is the, the minimum time it will take when it wiggles, and this is the maximum time. If you want it more consistent, put those at the same value. Put these at the same value, but then uh, it wouldn't be really wiggling it too much. Okay, so here we go. We almost see it. Look, we can see the rotation happening, and this was expected. That's great. We are rotating that point, but the sticks didn't go with it. All this stuff didn't go with it. The reason for that is the blob um, updates itself as we drag things, no doubt. But when we when we manually change a point with code, we have to actually call an update on the blob. We don't want the blob sitting there going, oh, I'm going to update myself over and over and over again just in case you change me. It's very rare that we animate these things. And when we do, we know we've got to actually update the blob. So uh, that would be done, if we're wiggling constantly, that would be done in a ticker, ticker.add, an arrow function. The ticker is a way that we can run a function as fast as the frame rate goes for the, uh, for the app. Inside of here, we would say blob.update. Uh, we don't need a stage.update. The stage.update will be handled by the ticker, unless optimize is true, in which case you know, there's other settings that you can do. But anyway, there, there's us updating the blob constantly in a ticker. And, oops, I hit an L rather than a semicolon here. And there we have it. So look at that wiggle go. Hey there! All right. Now that's not too bad because we just wanted to access the controls. Where it gets a little bit trickier is when we want to access the rectangles inside the controls. So this is the whole control, and you know that's fine. There, there it goes and wiggles. So let's uh, let's do that then. And we can just use the same ticker. It'll update the blob, and when we go and wiggle something or animate something. Uh, let's, uh, I guess we can wiggle it. It doesn't matter too much. So uh, what that would look like is um, const mm, control data, we'll call it, is equal to blob dot point objects. Um, so maybe data is the wrong one. Control objects. Yeah, that's better. Plural. So point objects is a different property than point controls. Point controls only gets us an array of the containers. Point objects gets us an array of all of the different parts of each point. So each point gets its own array, and in there are all of the different parts. So this is how it was initially in Zim only. And if we wanted to access something, we'd always have to, you know, do some trickery. As you see, it's arrays within arrays, and that just gets more complicated. So what we did uh, later on is we made point controls and also point circles. If you want to access the location of these circles inside here, then you can use that. And that's handy to put something on one of these circles if you wanted to, you know, place something on a circle, use point circles, and that gets you, you know that it's, the circle may be in a different place than the control, so that's the small danger there. Usually it isn't, but it could be. Uh, anyway, point circles is there, point controls. These are shorter arrays, only only one thing in the array, like one one thing, like the, the, the control itself, the container is in the array. Here, point objects, we could get the first point. Well, let's get the second point. Um, so that's at index one. Remember that arrays start indexing at zero and then go to one. So this will be zero, zero up here, Whoop, zero, and then one. So this is um, that one. And if we want, we can then get a whole bunch of different things. And it looks something like this. The first thing in there is the control itself. So we can get the control. And like I said, we used to have to do this. So if we wanted to wiggle uh, the first one there, it would be um, blob point objects at zero. That gets us everything. And then zero is the controls dot wiggle. And it was just tiresome to tell people to do this. 
when we could do that. And so that's why we introduced that. It's really just a shortcut to these things. Anyway, the control is the first thing. The circle is the next thing. The rect is the next thing. Uh, rect 1 and then rect 2 is the next thing. And these are not points. These are the actual rectangle, the actual circle, the actual control container. So these are things, which means we then would have to get the x and y position of these. So it's different than these things, where we where this is the x and the y of the circle, the x and the y of the, um, the rectangle, etc. So if we're animating and adjusting things afterwards, we don't use the points. You could possibly uh, use points. There is uh, blob.points. You can get those. But it's these things, and the thing what you would do is you would change those points and then recreate the blob using those points. You would pass you would pass those back in. I think we did make them settable, so now you can set a blob to these points if you want, and then what it goes is recreates the blob for you. But anyway, usually when we're animating something or changing something after, we're actually using the objects. So add zero would get us the control. This, uh, if we want to get one of these handles, I don't know which one's which, we'll go for 0, 1, 2, or 3, so 2, and then dot wiggle. And in the wiggle, we can, let's wiggle the x. Wiggle uh, the x. The one thing about wiggling an x position, though, is for our starting position, we don't actually know the x position. Well, actually, we do, I suppose. If we're dealing with this one, the x position of both of these rectangles is merely zero because you can see that its x position relative to the center here is, uh, is zero. So hey, we got lucky. We can wiggle it around zero. But if we were trying to wiggle this top one, we don't really know where that is. You could do this. Wiggle about the dot y. So this is saying, oh, no, not the x for that. It would be for y. If you didn't know what the y position, you're wanting to wiggle about this point, and we don't know where that is, well, you could just ask for it. But, you know, see what, that's, you know, it's not fitting on the screen. <laughs> or you could look, you could look up here. You could say, uh, let's see, what is the y of the second point? That is right here, 55. So minus 55 is the y of the the first rectangle. So we could wiggle around minus 55. Shall we see if it works? Minus, so we're wiggling around minus 55 and we're going to wiggle 20 pixels to 100 pixels each time in the amount of time of like 0.2. Well, let's do it really fast. 0.2 to 0.3 or something like that. So this is going to wiggle that amount about that starting point, which is where hopefully that's starting. Okay, and we save that up and we refresh. And we got an error. Let's check our errors, see what that is. Unexpected token square bracket. Where do we have a? Oh, uh, these guys are unexpected. So comment those out and refresh. <laughs> Oopsies, one. And as expected, this is now wiggling about that location. Looks like it's having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you want to wiggle the Y as well? Uh, a drawback with the wiggle, because all these things are different. Uh, unfortunately, it just means we have to set another wiggle. So we can do, oops, we can copy this whole line, copy, paste, and change the X position from about zero. And we'll do the same thing in about the same amount of time. So we're wiggling the same point about the y and the x. And at that point, I usually put the, did I do that wrong? No, there you go. I put the x first and y. Always put x first and y. And that way, if you always do that, you're, you're used to where to look for them. So we save that and we refresh. <laughs> and, uh, but we've got a const done twice. We don't need that. Oh yeah, this, what I was wanting to do, I don't even want to store that in controls. What am I, what am I thinking? I thought I'd be using that over and over again. So it was going to be like this, controls at zero. So I was thinking just store this thing once and then get, and same with here. So const point objects is just our blob dot point objects if we wanted to. Oh, that's about as long, isn't it? And then we can access it each time, like so. 
there. Okay, so store our array in <laughs> almost just as long. Like normally, I do that shorter. And we refresh here, and there we go. Oh, baby, look at hey, how's it going? Nah, 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 nah. All right, so that might be a little bit too much wiggle because we can see sort of where that that edge is on there, where this bottom part is not not working. If you were wanting to make this wiggle, try and keep up the the <laughs> to, to be equal like this, it's usually easier to to animate the scale of it and the rotation of it rather than calculate what angle it is or a negative version of it. Uh, I suppose you possibly could just set control object dot. Oh, this would be of the, of the second one. You could go to the second one and just set it to the negative version of these. Shall we try it? It doesn't look very pleasant. And you'd have to constantly be doing that. Not not here. You'd have to do it in the ticker. Um, you would say control objects at two. That's the other rectangle. Is dot x dot x is equal to uh, <laughs> the first rectangles. Uh, dot x, but minus that, and then it would be the opposite way. And same, you know, you guys don't want to do this, do you? Dot y, oops, dot y is almost the same thing. What an exploration! My goodness, dot y, uh, the negative. Okay, and let's see if that uh, that does it for us. I don't know if it will. I've never done this before. Oopsies, that's the wrong one. Why did I do a two? Oh yeah, okay. One and one. Were you guys correcting me? One and one is this point on on the right, but this thing needs to go to three. Three is the other rectangle. See, this other rectangle wasn't moving. <laughs> it's just sitting there. We are moving that one instead. So, hey, that worked, didn't it? So you see what's happening there. The we're keeping those two things even. But like I said, you could wiggle the rotation and the scale, and you would get the same thing. So if you if you wiggle the rotation and the scale, this is exactly what it would look like, and that's exactly what it would look like. So we've done a number of dancing blobs and all that kind of stuff. Isn't that fun? Oh my word, it is so much fun. And then a pause animate will pause that animation, and the, the pause animate false will start that animation again. If you want like to click on the stage and pause the animation, do you want to see it? One last thing in our exploration, uh, stage dot. Oh, hey, we finally got to click on the stage. Stage dot on. Stage mouse down. Oh, that's such an awful thing to have to type. It's create yes, is not ours. I should fix that. Stage uh, a mouse down happens. I don't even know if there is a mouse down actually, but if it were to happen, it mouses down on an object that's on the stage. But if you just click on the stage there's nothing there to mouse down on so that's a stage mouse down it's like okay well whatever we'll call this arrow function and when we do we're going to be toggling the uh what the animation in general so animate uh pause animate pause animate and we don't really know if it is animating or not so that's uh, not really going to help us is it so this will pause it. Ready? Boop, boop, boop. Refresh. La, 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 la. Click. Pause. Okay, that's been paused. Clicking off the blob is, is shutting those down. We can set the blob so that it doesn't toggle. That's uh, allow toggle false, and then it won't toggle. We can also hide these to start, make them not interactive. That's interactive colon false or show controls colon false if you want it to toggle and you want it hidden, <laughs> etc. So there's all sorts of options there. But anyway, that pauses it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know if it's, we don't, we're not, we're trying to pause all of these things. Is it the blob uh, where, let's see, we're, no, we're wiggling on the control thing. So we'd have to go into each one and pause it. So that means we're sort of stuck making our own, ver our toggle variable. So that would be something like let, animating equal true because it starts off animating so we're taking matters into our own hands and then we can go 
I guess we would say animating is equal to not animating. So that will swap it. And then I think in here, probably we just put that animating. This is either going to be true or false, and it should toggle our animation. If it doesn't, we just change something. It doesn't. So it was off by one. That would be <laughs> not animating. OK. Uh, so we click, and it pauses. Click, and it goes. Click, and it pauses. Click, and it goes. There you go. So we chose the positive animating. It, it might be better to say paused here. And paused is false. And then there we go. OK, that's instead of double negatives. That's the same thing. So click stops, click goes. Sorry if that was all fast for you. Some people watch these videos on fast speed where I'm going, I don't know for sure. You're welcome. I don't, is there a way to watch them on slow speed? And uh, you can put pause in the. Anyway, these were our own variables that we were using there. Quite often when you're just doing um, uh, one one object and you're animating it, want to pause it or start it again, you can ask for object.toggled or something like that, or paused, uh, paused. Yeah, that's it. I think it's paused. So uh, then you would just say something like circle, if the circle's animating, animate circle.paused. And... That or maybe it was not dot pause, <laughs> the opposite. Anyway, that would be done, and you wouldn't need any of these things uh, right there. It would just be one line of code, but we don't have that luxury currently. And if you don't get that, don't worry about it at all. There you go. I think that should do it for our explore. Wasn't that exciting? I hope it was for you. Um, I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been. Uh, Zim Explore, and we'll make sure that these files get up in zimjs.com slash explore. This one will be called Arrays. We were using Arrays to handle two complicated things, which people sometimes get confused about, both gradients and the block. Needs. So there you go. Hopefully that was fun. And uh, come on into zimjs.com slash slack. Ciao. Have a great night or day.